Tech Rabbit here. Um, I'm going to deal a little bit with um, a new weather station because this is my old weather station and it's got into a bit bad shape. The um, wind speed indicator lost all its pins some time ago and now the um, transmitter on this unit, this one here, has stopped working even if I put new batteries in it, it doesn't, it doesn't um, react and I can't open this very easily. So. Otherwise the, um, and then uh, the central unit, it's been working fine but um, it's getting a bit out of date, there's no Wi-Fi connection from here, it's only got a USB, uh, it's black and white, so <laughs> it's, I think it's about time to um, switch up. So anyway, I thought I'd upgrade. So I went for this one here, so um, pretty much the same type of outside unit, color display this time. Wi-Fi connection, and it also can connect to other weather stations which use the same so-called weather underground um, network. So I can get, theoretically one can get, like if other people have stations like this one, you get more localized weather. So anyway, let's see um, what this contains. Unboxing. So we have an instruction book. Congratulations. I don't know what that is. Look at it later. Some screws. The central unit. Run on batteries also. That's the outside unit. It's got the rain sensor, the wind speed indicator, and then the wind direction. And then you can put it on a, on a stand. And there's one, one pole. It has this kind of connector thing so you can actually. I think the idea is that you can like wrap it around something or you can you can put that in there and then like screw it to a wall. And that's it. Oh, oh, that's empty. Oh, it's kind of environmentally friendly package. No extra plastic. So let's see. So, as I said, this is the power supply, just the normal wall socket. It will be different for different regions, of course. So, this is Europe, so it has the European style connector. And um, we have the central unit. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Just throw some that. I think I'm going to run this from batteries, so I think that uh, it also has a like a you can mount it on the wall or you can actually have it sitting on a table. I'm going to have it mounted on a wall. So let's get some batteries in there. So I'll put some batteries in it, and um, the display is very dim, but you can I can see from the side that it's on, and the batteries are new. So I'm actually wondering if it um, is a little bit dependent on what the solar sensor says about the, the sun intensity. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, I'm going to put the batteries in this unit also and see what happens. So this one has triple three A, a batteries. These have the neck size up behind a screw screw cover. 
down in place. Dim. But it seems to be indicating all the numbers at least, so I think this is um, actually working. I don't understand why this is so dim. Outdoor temperature, humidity. I think it's trying to show the wind direction. Yeah, and the speed. I don't understand why the, why the display is so dim. I think the buttons are not. Incredibly dim. So, really strange. Well, I don't know if I'm totally happy, but it looks like you need to have. I wonder if you can even see it with the camera. But then now it's bright. But then I plugged in the power supply. So, I'm not really sure. Maybe. Maybe it can't. But let's see, if I unplug the power supply, let's see what will it will maintain the same brightness. No, then it really takes the brightness down to minimum. So it, it can't show stuff. It, it's mainly, I suppose, to keep the battery, to get the clock, keep the clock running. And this is a bit disturbing, that if I was going to have this wall mounted, then why did they have a 90 degree there? That might actually. Oh, I don't think it might get mounted on the wall anyway. Anyway, so that's a bit sad. I thought it would run on batteries, but no. It seems to need the need the power supply on the central unit. I suppose the color display, which is actually rather nice. Maybe you can't see it in the camera so well. But uh, we'll be taking more close-ups of this after I've actually finished the outside installation. Because now it's. You know, the clock's not set, and um, might actually come back to that, and then the outside unit needs to be installed. So anyway, so now it's um, basically, uh, battery's installed, and it's, I don't know how the basics work, so now I have to actually customize the way it's going to be installed. So anyway, I'm going to do it this way, so... In the northern hemisphere, this needs to be orientated at this end. So this this end here points to north that way. And um, since this needs to be, you need to adjust this so that you get the correct orientation. So I'm going to actually install it like that. I'm going to go in there. And then this one go in there, and then it comes with a, a few. No, it must be. Ah, oh, it's these bolts that go onto the, to the actual pole. And these smaller ones. And then these ones are used. Because now I'm going to actually put this here and use the longer bolts and then I'm going to actually put this on where I had the um, the pole for the old old one. I'm going to actually fasten this to the bit that's still remaining there. And then I can turn this around the pole to get the correct north and north south orientation. Yep, so that should yep. I'm try and get this installed.
it's on the wall and then we um, see that it's picking up the temperature and humidity and hopefully now the correct direction for, for north. <laughs> I don't understand that compass. I'm going to have to look at the map and see. I don't, I don't actually remember the orientation, exact orientation of north here for my house in relation to that shed. I'm going to have to um, look it up on the map. Uh, what else do we have? Pressure, rain, rain? 10 millimeters per hour. Oh, that's probably a, a um, integrated over time, so I wouldn't trust that. But it is. it, it was actually um, coming down with a little bit of moisture. So maybe it's actually started raining a bit more. And then, ah, oh, okay, so what needs to be set up is Wi Fi, connection, date, and time. And that you do through the side, they have some side um, keys here. So I'm going to actually have to read the manual and see how those work. Yeah. Oh, now it went to zero, that's as expected. So I'd call it a mystery. And then it's trying to forecast what the weather would be like. Probably also integrated over time, so I'm probably not correct now. Well, but I think it's a reasonably nice thing. So anyway, let's come back after I've um, configured the small thing. I might even actually take... I, I don't know, it's probably not that complicated. And I don't know if it's that interesting to video. But it's to press the buttons in a certain sequence to be able to set the stuff up. So probably not that complicated. So anyway, I thought I'd actually show the firmware very briefly anyway. So the way you get into the firmware is that you um, on the looking from the front on the right side the bottom button and the bottom of the bottom button you press in for three seconds until you hear the first beep and then you let go and then it broadcasts itself as a um, Wi-Fi base station and then uh, there, I'm filming this um, with my camera because this is a laptop so I use this laptop to connect to um, the firmware and um, you have to go to a specific website, web address, a local web address. It's in the manual, Hanai 268.5.1. And then you get this page. And then the first thing is just a normal, you, you define what um, network, Wi-Fi network you, you have to connect to and what's the password. It, it won't be displaying the status because it's showing the status of what it's connected to. And then um, where it deviates from the instruction manuals, it actually has these, um, uh, what, to what services is it broadcasting the weather data. And um, yeah, the, actually the instruction has um, uh, two different services, but the, this, um, the firmware actually only has two. Uh, so that's... Um, uh, underground.com and um which is the weather actually the weather underground <laughs> and then there's um uh, weather cloud dot net so those are the um two services that you can subscribe to. and the 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 id and password is basically it's a bit misleading um Captions because it's actually the codes you get from uh, the services. So those are the codes you get to linking and. Uh, So in the first instance, the um, ID is actually called station ID, and then there's station key is the password, so that's actually station key, just to make sure you get really confused. And then in the other service, the ID is called, um, oh, what is it? Weather cloud ID, so okay, quite close. 
but the other one is also called key so uh, uh, yeah okay there they've actually corrected the cap caption to be correct I actually just printed out the um, paper version it looks like that when you have a service I mean, I'm showing you the correct codes, but I don't think you can reuse them anyways, because I've already registered them under my names. Yeah, you could probably try and put it into another weather station. But don't use these codes, these are mine. And I don't know what happens if you do retry and reuse them. It might. The connection will probably not work. And then the last setting is time zone. And then if you want to use the internet time service to set the time. And then you can um, say uh, save and then it uh, registers this info. And, uh, it will reset the Wi-Fi back to to try and um, connect to the defined Wi-Fi network you have. And if it's working then you go look at the Wi-Fi signal which is on the display near the outside temperature or was it the te outside humidity. There's a Wi-Fi icon, and that will stop blinking. It'll be permanent. So then, then you know that it's actually connected to the um, Wi-Fi network. So yeah, that's that's that for now. Now we can actually have a look at the websites very briefly, so you can see those too. Okay, so anyway, now I thought we'd have a look at the um, two services you can connect to or send data to. Uh, just a very like brief overview. Anyway, the first one is Weather Cloud. I, I added my device, so you basically you go to devices, or you actually need to create an account first, and then you create a device. Um, you can actually have a look at that. It'll ask you some basic information, um, you know, like coordinates where your device. It, it it'll help you through this. So it's, it's nothing really that you can't do. And um, once you've actually registered the device, then it starts um, uh, collecting data, and also you can have a look at the current status. Uh, so, for example, here, this is actually a very nice dashboard, so it actually gives you the real time values for you know, the, all the values that you, you, know, you have. And then it starts building graphs also. I haven't been running it for very long, so it's. And then you can also have a look at the inside temperature. So I think this is a weather cloud is very good if you if you're really interested in the details of the values coming out of your own device and then it has like yeah when you get more data then you have a reporting capability and plots and <laughs> it gets rather exciting and then also the other interesting thing is you get a map um, where you can zoom in to your own area and you can actually see you can pick up other other um, you know, uh, services that are, or weather stations that are online on this network. Uh, there was one thing where it actually, you can't find this specific weather station, but it doesn't seem to actually matter on this service or the other service, it doesn't really seem to matter exactly what device you define. So, uh, um, uh, so I actually defined here model, you know, Pete Ross Ultimate 100 series, it, uh, it, whatever. It, 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 it actually seems not to be, uh, it's more like to register it for us humans to want to know what weather station it is, but it actually doesn't seem to affect the technical function. And, um, oh, anything else? Yeah, so, and, um, now oh, this is free, and then there are some functionality that they want you to pay for either a business plan or a private person plan or a business plan um, but I, I don't know I, th th this basically works for the you know dedicated on on your workstation and um, uh, what else can I say not really very good for predicting weather so it's more like to get specific values um, anyway so anyway uh, that was that and then um, but if you're mainly interested in weather like then you should you should think of the uh, weather underground and also the oh the difference was this this hasn't yet got an app and they've actually removed they've according to the internet this the, this weather club was reporting that they had an app in development but that even that message has disappeared from their website 
So you don't get an app, and there's no idea when it will be available yet. Um, but you can, of course, you can access this web page through the browser on your smartphone or tablet or whatever. So I don't know if it's really a big deal that it hasn't got an app. Uh, this, however, it does have a mobile apps, both for iOS and Android. And this site, or this service, is very much dedicated into if you're really into being a weather geek, like weather, not specific values from your own um, own um, uh, system. So you know it has a well, you know, very big weather station, you know, 250,000 weather stations. And then you get like tons of different types of maps, you know, with all kinds of analytics and filtering and overlays and you know, like the the usual stuff that if you if you were into being a, a weather geekery, then this is uh, actually very good. And then you get um, uh, yeah severe weather stuff, um, news and blogs and uh, a little bit more. Uh, so. And then here you actually you register yourself here, and then you create a device. And um, let's see, do I have any? Uh, th this goes pretty much the same way as the other one does. Um, no, no real big deal. Oh, now it's actually this didn't pop up the last time I looked at this. So this is interesting. It does actually give you the values from your own website. Okay, so I have to go back on my word. So this is actually also works for for getting the detailed data. But anyway, when you cre when you create uh, an account and you add your device, and in both cases you get the IDs that I'll, I just showed that you need to put into the um, firmware. So when you when you go through the creation process, you actually get the registration data you need to be able to tell the weather station what. Uh, to send the data. Okay, yeah, and then you can see other weather stations also. So. Hmm. Maybe I have to reevaluate. No, no, I still think that basically the um, weather underground is more for if you are interested in r like local city weather, and then I would argue that the weather cloud is better if you're only interested in mostly. You, like specific data from your weather station or neighbor, you know, some some weather station close to. My, that's my general very high high level <laughs> definition. <laughs> so that was that. I don't know. I mean, there's so many details, and I'm not a I'm not a like, yeah, weather geek. I I wouldn't even know how to talk about these in terms of their. You know more in-depth usability of things. So usually I do want. I would like to. I mean, my goal would be to be able to follow the values on my weather station and then get a weather overview. And, and if I combine these both apps, then I think I'm going to get a very good um, combination of data. And plus that, then I can. I'm going to actually look into the um, mobile app for the weather underground. I don't know if I'll put it in a video because it's probably going to contain the same data as we're reviewing here. So. So, but I'm going to install that. And see what happens. So anyway, that was the um, weather station um, uh, installation and commissioning. <coughs> um, yeah, so that's a wrap up, I think. Yeah. And. Um, so far, it's worked fine. Uh, as I said, I haven't, as you saw from the statistics, I've only been running it now for hours, not even days. But I mean, the display looks, when it's plugged into the wall, looks really good. Um, <coughs> it's responsive. I mean, the apps the, or the these web services, they seem to do what I, I would think to the level that I'm interested, at least, very, are very um, good enough. So I can, I can recommend a weather station if you live in circumstances where um, setting out the um, external unit is possible. So anyway, if you like this video, consider um, subscribing, hit the like button, bell icon if you want to be notified for more, and um, tell others that are interested, if and especially if they're like weather geeks, they, they might actually be interested. I mean, the 
it, it, it has very many sensing capabilities like we went through when I showed it. You know, it even has sort of like solar intensity and dust part, uh, you know, air quality measurement and <coughs> in addition to the normal functions. So I think it's kind of interesting. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next one.